Welcome, and today we're going to be showing you how to add more realism to your explosive effects. This is basically a follow-up video to the one we did earlier. This is what we're going to try to end up with. And this is a kind of a follow-up to the video we did on just adding an explosion. So I'll play it for you right here. It's an explosion, and we're mostly working on trying to get the explosion to look right. But now we're trying to get the rest of the scene to look right. So that's what we're going to get into right now. So the first thing that we're going to create a duplicate track. So we right click and go to duplicate track. And then we'll drag that up to the top. So you, and you'll see that black bar kind of shows you where you are. So now we've duplicated our second track up on the top. And now because that track is there, you can't box everything. You can't see the tracks beneath it. It's not, it has no opacity. So if we were to play the video, you can't see anything because track one, the video is blocking it. So one of the problems that you run into, the first thing we're going to try to do is move the explosion behind those rocks over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the opacity of that track so that I can see what's going on. And now I'm going to show you a little trick. I can't even see where the explosion is. It's very little. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this invert effect. And now you'll see down there on the corner, you can actually see where the little explosion started. And without that inversion effect, you can't even see where the <laughs> explosion is to move it. So we're just going to use that as an aid right now, but we'll be getting rid of that effect. So now we're going to go into pan crop. The most important thing here is to make sure that your cursor is in the front position. A lot, it's so easy to just start keyframing and you don't realize you're in the wrong keyframe. So now what we do is we're just going to move this by clicking and dragging and repositioning the explosion over where, behind where those rocks are. So that looks about right. And um, if we play it, you see there's where the explosion starts and actually a lot of it seems to go into the sky. So I might want to actually pull that down a little bit. So let's, let's see, that should be pretty good. Let me close this. And so with the opacity still reduced, we'll, we'll watch our video now. We'll see how well it's positioned, the explosion is positioned. And that seems fine where it is. So now we're going to go in here and what we're going to do is we need to create a mask so we're going to again move the cursor to the first position and we need to block out these rocks here so we're going to mask out those rocks so with the explosion reposition if we mask out the rocks we click mask and then the anchor tool will be able to make it appear as if the explosion is behind the rocks so this is just some masking that needs to be done it's not necessarily the funnest thing in the world the control key will end up being your friend so make sure the anchor tool selected and when you click on that you can click there and it'll reconnect a segment and here you don't necessarily have to follow the exact pattern of what you're masking you can actually just kind of recreate it and create kind of a new outline and all we're trying to do here is just block out the explosion part. So it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. It doesn't have to follow exactly the line. You can kind of recreate the line. Now masking is kind of tricky, but the key button you're going to need to be pre pressing is the control key. So if we click on that with control, those handles come up. If it's an upside down V, you can click and drag just that handle. So what I like to do is just put as few of anchor points as possible and then just bend them into position. Now, if you if you see the full arrow, then it's gonna bend both. If you press control when you're clicking on the end of the handle, then the upside down V will appear. But once you get in the handle of pulling these handles and pressing control, you actually get a much smoother and professional looking result. So here, let's see, we're gonna see how both handles are moving. Now, if I click control, I just have the upside down V. So what I'm doing here, I click there, now I accidentally created an extra point, so I'm going to go to the deletion tool and just delete that. Oops, I didn't get it. Delete it. Go back and click the anchor creation tool, and now I'm back in the game. Now press control and pull. I can just pull the whole thing down. But what I like to do is bend these handles, but it's a little... You just got to see what you're dealing with. So here, there, if I'm upside down V, and here we go. There's a similar upside down V so I can click just that one handle and I just kind of make my way through the whole thing trying to line it up the best I can 
you don't want to have just a straight line here so you want to just kind of as long as the line is uneven it will mimic the outline of the rock there's no reason for it to follow the outline of the rock exactly you just got to get a close approximation to what the rock was this shot will probably be on the screen for about three seconds so it really there's really no point in following the rock 100 percent as long as you're creating an uneven pattern of contours people won't believe it's a rock okay so now we're done with that and uh, we're going to deselect that and now what we're going to do this is the important part we're going to create a, a mask so that when we create a lighting effect the light doesn't go over the whole scene you'll see where the shadow line is that's the line we really want to follow. When the explosion goes off, it's only going to light up part of the lighthouse. It's not going to light up the entire lighthouse. So what we're doing is creating a mask so that the light only lights up part of the scene, not the whole scene. If it lit up the whole scene, it wouldn't look realistic. So really what we're doing is we're blocking this part off from the additional lighting that we're going to create. So this mask doesn't have to be perfect at all because we're going to feather it. So the first mask we created, we're not going to feather it it needs to be sharp because it's a rock and so like a rock blocking light this can because it's just going to be shade we can actually feather this quite a bit so we feather that quite a bit we're good to go we got our two masks so now we're going to restore the opacity here and what we're going to do is we're going to go into this lower track this is the main scene actually and if we watch the explosion now, you can see it's behind the rocks and there's no feather. If you feathered that, it would be kind of transparent and look fake. So now when this light goes off, it should be casting light on the lighthouse, but we don't see any light on the lighthouse. So that's what we're going to fix right now. So we go in and we get the color corrector and we add, go OK. We're going to click animate. I got to reposition my window here. It's not lined up. What we got to do is we need to see the fireball. So let me play this video until we see a good portion of the fireball. Like maybe right there, maybe let me go back. Okay, right there I see a pretty good portion of the fireball. Let me reposition the color corrector. Now I click this eyedrop in the mid range. It tells me what kind of color it is, but there's way too much green in that. So I'm going to shift it over to a color that I feel is more an accurate representation of the color of the fireball. This is kind of a creative call. There's no necessarily right or wrong. I'm gonna call it kind of a orangish yellow to me. I think that's the color that it would be. So we set just the mid is all we have to set. Then we click the animate button and we're gonna drag the cursor all the way to the front or we can click this button and that gets us to the front even faster. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to match the light, the color of the scene to match the fireball. So I'm going to back off the saturation actually a little bit to 755. And now we're going to pull this cursor along. So as we pull the cursor, there's the fireball starting. So we're going to add a little more saturation right there. Bring it up to about one. Now we're going to pull the cursor along. Now the fireball is nearing its fullest form right there. And so we're going to jack up the saturation and we'll drag along further. And now the fireball, I would say, is at its fullest. So we're going to jack that up to, let's jack that up to 1.857 and keep it there and keep it there. And maybe there the fireball should be dis diminishing, so we're going to back off the color. And you'll notice on the side of the lighthouse how the color is dropping as we're dropping the saturation. And you'll notice because we have a mask in place, the color's not spilling all the way over to the foreground of the lighthouse. So we keep pulling the cursor until we back it all the way back down to where the fireball's gone. And now the color is back to where it was in the very first scene. And if we pull this back, we can see the lighting change in response to the fireball. Now, this is a kind of a subtle effect, but it's these kind of details that add up to create a sense of realism and taking the time to block off the parts of where the light would fall from where it wouldn't fall makes a big difference. So now the third thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and let's say we want to kind of tie these three tracks all together. So let's say we wanted to go and apply a look to the scene. So what we could do is let's say I want to put a color curve on this. So I'm going to put a color curve on this and this would be on my number one track on the lowest track. 
that's actually the number three track and I'm so then what I can do is I can save this as a custom setting because I want to apply the same effect equally across the board so I'm going to call this custom three and save it as a preset then I'm going to go into the firewall and I'm going to pull up custom uh, color curves go OK add and then I'm going to go into the presets and I'll apply that custom three so I know the exact same settings are going on that track and then I go into the last track I do the same thing I add color curves I click add OK I don't have to guess at what my settings were I can just apply them exactly across the board so now I've created the same kind of look across all three clips and that also helps to tie the scene together so we've repositioned the explosion we've we've masked out where the lighting would fall from the fireball and this is what we end up with hope you found this helpful if you did please like and subscribe and take care and have a great day